Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Entrepreneur Help Desk, where I use my platform to help educate you with all things taxes and entrepreneurship. Okay, so one thing that inspired this video was a call I received today from one of my small business clients who was asking me about giving their social security number out to the person who was hiring them for an independent project. So basically the person had explained how they needed it so that they can issue my client a 1099 form once they were done. But this was a first for my client as they had not heard of this before, giving out your social security number, right? So then I went into explaining how my client could actually obtain an EIN even under their personal name, which I will get into later in this video and give the person that instead, as well as filling out the form W-9, et cetera, okay? So, um, which I may do a video on in the future. All right, so if this is your first time finding me, my name is Tasha, and I'm an accountant and a business consultant serving middle and high income part-time and full-time entrepreneurs across the United States. Okay, in the description box, you can find a list of my services I offer and some of the specific industries that I actually have a deep level of knowledge in, but all industries are welcome. All right, so first, let's talk about what an EIN is, okay? So the acronym EIN stands for Employer Identification Number, but it's also known as your business tax ID number and you don't need to be an employer to get one. You can obtain an EIN for your LLC, your corporation, your nonprofit, your sole proprietorship, even as yourself under your personal name. And it's a nine digit number assigned to you by the IRS. Okay, I like to say it's kind of like how our social security numbers are attached to us. That's what this number is to your business, okay? So now let's go over what it's used for. Well, I had already spoken about this, so I should have slid down to the screen. I apologize. Okay, so let's go into what it's used for. Okay, so your EIN is used for tax filing purposes. It's used to open a business bank account and also to establish a business credit. And speaking of bank accounts, guys, um, it's just a habit of saying guys, guys and girls, <laughs> everyone. Okay, so I actually will put a link in the description box. I just did a video to um, teaching you about opening up your business bank account, business bank account. So you should really check that out. But these are some of the reasons that is used for, okay? So I'm also going to take you to the IRS website in a minute, but I do want to mention a few things, Okay. So a few things that's important to do first before you even go to the IRS website to get your EIN. All right. So the first thing you might want to consider, all right, and let me also say, guys, this is not to be considered legal advice. Definitely consult with your, prof your tax professional or your accountant. And yeah, so that's just a disclosure I need to put. All right. So... Um, this video is just for informational purposes only. So as I was saying, one of the first things you may want to do is first get your name registered, whether it's going to be a DBA, so a proprietorship, an LLC, a corporation, a nonprofit, okay? You might want to first set up your business entity with your state so that you can make sure the name you want to use is available. Because if you obtain the EIN first and then go to register your business and the name isn't available, that's going to cause a huge problem, guys, okay? And that could have been avoided had you have just taken care of the name registration first before you went getting the EIN. I cannot tell you how many times people have come to me and then after the fact, it was just a whole big issue. All right. So secondly, and, and this is not really in a particular order, but usually the name should come first. So secondly, all right, one of the questions you're going to be asked is for a physical address. And if you have a separate mailing address. So here's the thing. If you're going to be doing this business from home, then technically the physical address is your home 
but you can certainly use an alternative address for your business, such as a P.O. box, um, because now the, P the post office actually allows you to use their street address instead of having to say P.O. box. Okay, and you can just like put the street address and just put the number sign of your box. All right. So you can also get a box with the UPS store or any of those other virtual type of business addresses. It's not a big deal if you don't do this step first, but just remember to change your address if you get it later, right? If you do this part later, just remember you have to change your address with your state and with your EIN application and all of that stuff, okay? So a lot of people forget to do that as well. All right, and the reason why I suggest this, guys, is because a lot of people forget that um, this is public information. So if you go, you know, getting your LLC set up, your corporation, whatever, you know, if someone looks you up, all of your personal residence information is all on the internet, even though I know people can kind of find that out anyway from other sources, but you get what I'm saying. You don't want them looking up your business and then they're seeing your home address. That's just really not cool. All right. So the third thing I'm kind of piggybacking off of the first point is that um, you need to know your business structure. Okay. There are many times when people came to me saying they're one type of business structure, but when they provided me with the EIN letter, it actually showed me that they had, they were set up as a totally different business structure. So this is very, very important, okay, which ties into when you're registering your entity with your state, okay? The fourth thing you want to have ready is who will be your responsible person, okay? Majority of the time, it's going to be yourself, but let's say that you're starting a partnership and maybe your partner is going to be the responsible person. Then you want to make sure you have all of their necessary information, such as their social security number, their legal name, their address, and things like that. All right, it's important to have this information available that I just went over because it's a timed process when you're doing the online EIN application, okay? And if there is 15 minutes of inactivity throughout the process, the system will kick you off and you will have to start all over again. So if you make a mistake, that's the other thing because the application doesn't save, you will have to start all over again if you make a mistake. Okay, so let's go over to the IRS website. Okay, so I'm on the website. Now, guys, it's irs.gov, G-O-V, not .com, all right? And a lot of times when you're putting stuff in just saying Google, apply for EIN, a lot of those, um, when you do that, it's taking you to like a third-party situation. Okay, and that's why they're charging you to get it. Getting this number is free. Um, the service you do have to pay for, like even I do charge to get this for people. And if I'm setting up your business, it's part of the setup process, it's included. But what I'm saying is that it is um, a free thing. So it's not that you have to pay for it, pay for the IRS, but when you're going through a third party site or someone to do it for you, you do have to pay for the service, okay? But if you're getting it yourself, it's irs.gov. Now, the form that you're filling out is called SS4, but you're doing it online. So we're gonna go to the search box and say EIN um, application. Okay, now you're gonna go apply for SS4. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so let me just try this again. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, yeah, so actually just type in EIN. Don't say EIN, apply. Just go EIN in the search bar, and then you're going to be taken to this page. Now, the thing is, if you're going to do it online, because I'm at the time of me recording this, it's after hours, so we're not going to be able to apply for it online. I'm not going to be able to take you through 
um, the actual application because you have to do it between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. But what I can do, because the same questions that they're going to ask you for the online application, they're going to ask you on paper. So I'm going to take you to the paper version. Okay. And let me see, let me go back for a second because I wanted to show you. Yeah, you can do it online um, or you can do the paper version. Okay. But we're going to do the paper version. Okay, let's see, where is it? I think let's try here how to apply for EIN. Yeah, okay. So when you're on the how to apply for EIN, because you can also do it by fax, you can do it by mail once you fill out the form, okay? And you can do it by telephone too. I've never done it by telephone, but... Um, I just do them online now because you can get your EIN right away and you can print the letter right away and all of that. But let's go to the form because I want to show you guys the questions that you're going to be asked. Okay. So when you're doing it online, the thing is when you're doing it online, the, the IRS website is going to take you from screen to screen you're not going to be looking at this actual form but i'm just going to show you briefly like what the questions that they're going to ask you okay so they're going to ask you the legal name of your entity which is what i was explaining you need to have that established ahead of time um the trade name if it's different from your name from the name of your business your mailing address, that's going to be the, as I mentioned, um, if you're going to get like that P.O. box and just use the post office street address or the UPS store, or whatever. Okay. And this part is, as mentioned, the physical location, okay, which is going to be your home. All right. The county and state where it's located, okay, where your principal business is actually located. As I mentioned, the name of the responsible party, their social security number, okay? Is this application for a limited liability company in LLC? So you'd say yes, okay? And if it is an LLC, the number of members. In most cases, since it's just you, it's just gonna be one, all right? But if this is a multi-member LLC, a partnership, then you're going to put however many partners it's going to be in it. Okay. And let's see. Was it established? Was it organized in the United States? Obviously, yes. Okay. Type of business entity. This is what I was telling you. You need to know your entity. It's very important if you're a sole proprietor. So guys, like, let me just go back up here for a minute. If you're going to use your personal name, that's fine. You can put that name there. And here is where you put, you check sole proprietor, okay? And then you put your social, okay? So, yeah, some people didn't know that they can just get an EIN for business as a sole proprietor, okay? Now, in terms of the type of entity you are, are you going to be a partnership? Are you a corporation, a personal service corporation? That applies to different case scenarios. For example, if you're a, a dentist or something, you're a personal service corporation. All right. Um, if your business is incorporated. Okay. Um, I'm not going over these because these are for different situations. Um, um, this video is about uh, entrepreneurship, so I'm not going to go over the other purposes of getting the EIN. Okay. So, if a corporation named the state or foreign country, if applicable, we're incorporated. That's only if it's out of the country, okay? Your reason for applying is usually, in all cases, going to be that you started a new business, okay? Um, that's just mainly, but if it's that you're opening a bank account, you can choose banking purpose. Either one is going to work, okay? Um if you're hiring employees, if if you didn't already have this EIN and now you're hiring employees, okay, but if you're new to business, this is what you're going to check started a new business, okay? 
and the date the business started. Okay, closing month of accounting year is going to be December. All right. And let's see. First date of wages paid. That's only if you're going to have other people working for you. So that's not going to go over that right now. But um, if you are, then you need to put the first date here that you expect to be paying those employees. Okay. So let's see here. This is where you're going to choose the category if any of these apply. And if not, then check other and put it here. Okay, it's like your principal activity of your business. All right, like real estate, um, something like that, or if it's something different. If you're going to be like an online boutique, you check retail. Okay, and indicate the principal line of merchandise sold. So you're going to list that briefly here. Okay, has the applicant entity shown on line one applied for and received another EIN? So like if this is your very first EIN that you've ever applied for, you're going to say no. But if you do have a previous EIN under another situation, you check yes, and then you put that number here because they like to, the IRS likes to keep track of like basically how many EINs are attached to you. Okay. Now, if someone is doing this for you, they their information would go here and you would sign. If you did this yourself, this stays blank. You're not a third party person and you just sign, okay? And then you're going to mail the form. Let's see if they provide the address where, no. But in the instructions, you would see where to mail it as we went over, um, no, sorry. Okay, oops. oops. Sorry, guys, I had other screens open. So, yeah, but basically um, on that IRS website, it, it's going to show you where to mail it or where to fax it. Uh, definitely keep a copy for your records. And that's pretty much it. Now, the reason why I titled this under 30 minutes, because as I mentioned, if you're... Um, doing the online version between the open hours, you're going to get that number right away. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Let me go back to my screen. Okay, guys. So that's pretty much it for this um, video. I do thank you for watching. Keep in mind that I do also offer services to help get you all set up correctly with your LLC or your corporation, your partnership. I do your EIN and everything and other business registrations with your state. Okay, this information here, I've, I've lately been letting you all know because I do have these three masterclasses that are in the description box below the video. Um, how to file taxes as self-employment. That's a great course. And these are all very affordable. And when you buy more than one, you get discounts on the other one. Okay. This one is the business of taxes, a masterclass for independent stylists and barbers. And then I also have how to prepare your schedule C. Okay. And I'm also working on new courses for you guys, all right? And I just want to say that I do apologize for delays when I respond to your YouTube comments or emails. I do appreciate the growth of my channel. And just please keep in mind that I do still run my service-based business full-time, so I thank you in advance for your patience. Okay, thank you for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and like this video so that YouTube can push it out to others looking for this information. And until next time, take care.